you're watching daily news podcast on Mangalore today, where news breaks and stories unfold. From the latest updates to in-depth analyzes, we're here to keep you informed and engaged. Let's get started. In a fascinating exchange of wildlife, Pilakula Biological Park in Mangaluru is all set to welcome Asiatic lions, penguins, and yellow anacondas soon. The park director H.J. Bondari shared that a male Asiatic lion from Nandankanan Biological Park in Odisha will be joining the collection along with other rare species like wolves, gharials, and exotic birds. Additionally, animals like toll, reticulated python, Asian palm civet, and brahmini kites will be sent to Nandankanan Park in return. The exchange also includes a yellow anaconda coming from Madras Crocodile Bank Trust in Chennai in exchange for Indian cobras and other venomous snakes. This initiative aims to enhance biodiversity conservation efforts across different regions. The director also mentioned plans for creating a special enclosure for the penguins, which is expected to boost the zoo's visitors' footfall. Accusing the state government for the unrest in Bantwal, Dakshina Kannada MP Captain Brijesh Chauta highlighted concerns about rising tensions in the region. Speaking at a blood donation camp in Mangaluru, he criticized the Congress-led government for allegedly promoting anti-Hindu and anti-people policies. Calling for strict action against those inciting communal hatred, Chauta emphasized the need for maintaining peace and order. He also raised issues of illegal activities and corruption under the current administration, urging authorities to prioritize law enforcement. The MP reaffirmed BJP's stance in supporting Hindu activists and expressed concerns over the provocative use of flags in the region. The allegations made by Captain Brijesh Chauta have sparked debates on governance and communal harmony in Dakshina Kannada. Tragic news from Shirva today as Nityananda Shetty, a sub-inspector at the wireless control room of the Udupi SP's office, has passed away at the age of 51 due to a sudden heart attack at his residence. Shetty, who had dedicated 28 years to the police department, and previously served at the Coastal Security Police, leaves behind his mother, wife, a son, and a daughter. Our thoughts and condolences go out to his family during this difficult time. In Mangalore today, Dakshina Canada MP Captain Brijesh Chauta has called for the swift arrest of former Bantwal TMC president and his supporters for making inflammatory remarks aimed at disrupting peace and inciting the Hindu community at BC Road. MP Chauta condemned the alleged Congress plot to stoke communal tensions and emphasized the need to not just file FIRs, but to imprison those who propagate hate and seek to disturb harmony. He demanded a thorough investigation into the culprits behind such divisive statements and stressed the importance of legal repercussions. MP Chauta highlighted the link between illegal activities like sand mining in BC Road Bantwal, Melkar, and the surrounding regions, and the rise of antisocial elements fueling unrest. He urged the district administration and mining authorities to crack down on unlawful operations swiftly to uphold peace. In a heartwarming event at Mangalore, Bishop T. Rev. Dr. Peter Paul Saldanha emphasized the importance of listening to the poor and addressing poverty in all its forms. The inauguration of the Mr. Michael D. Souza and Family Educare Endowment Fund saw deserving students receiving interest-free educational loans, empowering the underprivileged in the community. Bishop Saldanha praised the Souza family for their dedication to education empowerment, which has benefited thousands of students over the years. Mrs. Flavia D. Souza and her family generously donated Roar 75,000 to support this noble cause. The program, graced by esteemed guests, highlighted the impact of compassion and education in uplifting society. The bishop urged students to be grateful for the opportunity and encouraged them to repay the loans to sustain the fund. This initiative stands as a beacon of hope, inspiring others to contribute towards making the world a better place for all. In the wake of the unfortunate demise of a student from Bengaluru in Kerala due to the Nipah virus, the Karnataka Health Department is intensifying surveillance measures. The 24-year-old psychology student, originally from Thiruvalli Panchayat, Malapuram, had contacts in the Sola Devanahali Institute where he studied. Following his death, steps are being taken to trace and monitor primary and secondary contacts. Health officials are closely monitoring the situation and ensuring precautionary measures. 
Despite concerns, no cases have been suspected or reported in Karnataka so far. Health Minister Dinesh Gundu Rao has urged the public not to panic, assuring that the department is vigilant and taking necessary actions to prevent the spread of the virus. In a tragic incident, a 22-year-old student identified as Mohan Kumar Mehdi, hailing from Chikabalapur, has been found dead at his residence in Pragathinagar, Saratkal. The young man's body was discovered in a decomposed state, leading to a distressing scene. Mohan's mother raised an alarm after unsuccessful attempts to contact him, prompting the landowner to make the gruesome discovery. The motive behind this extreme step remains unclear, deepening the mystery surrounding the case. Family members have arrived to transport Mohan's mortal remains back to Chikabalapur. Sarathkal police have initiated an investigation into this tragic incident. In a tragic turn of events, a lecturer from Mangaluru, Archana Kamath, has passed away at the age of 33 after donating a part of her liver to a relative. Following a successful surgery in Bengaluru, Archana fell ill suddenly, and despite efforts to save her, she couldn't be revived. The recipient of her liver donation, a relative of her husband, is said to be recovering well. Archana, who worked at Kanara College and later at Manel Srinivas Nayak Institute of Management, leaves behind her husband and a four-year-old son. The selfless act of organ donation by Archana has left a deep impact on the community, exemplifying the spirit of compassion and generosity. Santosh Andrade, a renowned artist from Mangaluru, is all set to showcase his solo exhibition titled In Pursuit of Harmony at Jahangir Art Gallery, Mumbai. The exhibition, organized in collaboration with the Department of Kannada and Culture, Government of Karnataka, will feature over 30 artworks capturing the essence of Mangalore's charm. Andrade's vibrant pieces depict serene natural settings, coconut trees, and bustling markets, celebrating the beauty of everyday life. The exhibition will run from September 17th to 23rd and is open to the public from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily. Boasting a master's degree in fine arts, Andrade has won prestigious awards nationally and internationally for his innovative and layered artworks inspired by nature and societal issues. Through his art, Andrade seeks to evoke tranquility and emphasize humanity's connection to nature. Don't miss this chance to witness the blend of tradition and innovation in Andrade's work at this exclusive exhibition in Mumbai. In a recent development in Udupi, the five BJP MLAs and Udupi Chikamagaluru MP, Kota Srinivas Pujari, have accused the state government of neglecting the district of Udupi in terms of development initiatives. Threatening to stage a protest in front of Chief Minister Siddharamaya's residence in Bengaluru, if their demands are not met within the next 10 days, the politicians express dissatisfaction over the government's failure to address issues such as relief funds for natural calamities and infrastructure development. The MLAs highlighted concerns about the administration's lack of cooperation with local representatives and the poor condition of rural roads due to the absence of pothole-filling works. Additionally, they criticized the government's decision to cancel BPL cards in the district, alleging that it is a deceptive move. Stay tuned as this situation unfolds and local leaders plan further actions to address these grievances. In a tragic incident, a 19-year-old youth from Vitalvadi in Kundapur, Mangaluru, has lost his life to heat stroke in the UAE. The victim, identified as Sean D'Souza, was a college student in Dubai. Despite receiving treatment at a hospital in Ras Al Khaimah, Shan tragically passed away. Our thoughts and prayers are with the grieving family of Shan, including his parents, Elias Cyril D'Souza and Pramila D'Souza, during this difficult time. In a significant development, the Supreme Court has issued a notice to Karnataka's Deputy Chief Minister, D.K. Shivakumar, and the state government regarding a plea challenging the withdrawal of consent to the CBI for investigating a disproportionate assets case against him. This notice comes in response to a petition filed by Karnataka BJP MLA Basanaguda Patil Yatnal, questioning the Karnataka High Court's decision to reject his plea. Senior advocates representing both sides defended their arguments before the bench of Justices Surya Kant and Ujil Buyan. The court has decided to examine the matter further allowing the state government and Shiva Kumar to raise preliminary objections. This case has sparked a legal battle involving multiple parties, 
and has raised important constitutional questions that the court will deliberate upon. Stay tuned for more updates on this developing story. In Mangalore today, leaders from all parties extended warm birthday wishes to Prime Minister Narendra Modi as he turned 74. Delhi CM Arvind Kejriwal, set to resign later, wished PM Modi a long and healthy life, followed by Congress MP Rahul Gandhi and Tamil Nadu CM MK Stalin. BJP leaders, including Union Minister J.P. Nada and Uttarakhand CM Pushkar Singh Dami, praised PM Modi's leadership and dedication to nation building. The political spectrum united in sending good wishes to the Prime Minister on his special day. In a recent development, the Supreme Court has dismissed criminal proceedings against Army personnel involved in a tragic counterinsurgency operation in Nagaland's Mon District in 2021 where 14 civilians lost their lives. The court clarified that its decision does not hinder the army from taking disciplinary action against the personnel. The Nagaland government had challenged the center's denial to grant prosecution sanction for the 30 army personnel involved. The center has been given six weeks to respond to the plea. The incident occurred on December 4, 2021, when the army mistakenly fired at a truck carrying minors leading to the deaths of six civilians. Subsequent violence resulted in the loss of eight more lives, including an army personnel. The Home Minister addressed the Lok Sabha, attributing the incident to mistaken identity. In a surprising turn of events, Atishi has been nominated as the next Chief Minister of Delhi, taking over from Arvind Kejriwal. Atishi was proposed by Kejriwal himself during the legislature party meeting and was unanimously accepted by the AAP MLAs. It has been reported that there will be no deputy chief minister in the new cabinet. The oath-taking ceremony for Atishi is scheduled to take place during a special assembly session on September 26, 27. Kedrewal, who recently obtained bail in a legal case, announced his decision to step down on September 15, causing ripples in Delhi's political landscape. In Mangalore today, the union minister Amit Shah unveiled the achievements of the Modi government's third term highlighting approved projects worth 15 lakh crore. Over 3 lakh crore has been allocated for infrastructure, including linking 25,000 villages to road networks and expanding major roads across India. Additionally, a mega port in Wadwan, Maharashtra, costing 76,000 crore is in the works. The government launched the PM eBus Siwa scheme, abolished angel tax for startups, and designated 12 industrial zones for development. To combat cybercrime, 5,000 cyber commandos will be deployed. A PM package of 2 lakh crore for the youth was announced, along with tax relief, ORAP implementation, and housing projects. Initiatives to enhance air and metro connectivity and an emphasis on agriculture were also highlighted. The government aims to establish India as a major player in semiconductors and has introduced projects to create employment opportunities. In a recent development, Chief Minister Siddharamaya may order a Lokayukta probe or the formation of a special investigation team to look into corruption allegations against Rajarajeshwari Nar BJP MLA Munaratna. Following a meeting with a delegation of Vokaliga Congress leaders, Agriculture Minister N. Chalavarayaswamy emphasized the need for stringent action against Munaratna, who is currently under arrest for allegedly demanding bribes from a BBMP contractor and making derogatory castiest remarks. Chalavarayaswamy highlighted the importance of holding Munaratna accountable for his actions, urging the entire society to boycott the MLA. The minister expressed concerns about Munaratna's history of escaping accountability, emphasizing the need for legal measures to prevent this. Additionally, Women and Child Development Minister Laxmi Hebalkar visited the contractor's family to provide support and ensure their safety amidst the ongoing investigations. Stay tuned to Mangalore Today for further updates on this developing story. Today in Mangalore, we bring you updates from Kolkata where the Supreme Court is set to, to address the case of the tragic rape and murder of a doctor at R.G. Carr Medical College and Hospital. The missing key document related to the case has stirred controversy, with Chief Justice D.Y. Chandrachud emphasizing its significance. The protesting junior doctors are standing firm on their demands for justice and the removal of top officials. After intense discussions, Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee has agreed to most demands, including the resignation of the Kolkata police chief. 
the agitation now in its 39th day, marks a significant victory for the protesting doctors. Meanwhile, the CBI has charged former college principal Dr. Sandip Ghosh with evidence tampering, adding a new twist to the case. This horrific incident has shaken the nation and sparked widespread outrage. Stay tuned for more updates on this developing story. In Mangalore Today News, Prime Minister Narendra Modi received heartfelt birthday wishes from leaders across party lines on his 74th birthday. Congress President Malakarjan Karj, BSP National President Mayawati, and Tamil Nadu CM M.K. Stalin were among those who extended their greetings. Tripura CM Manik Saha and Maharashtra CM Eknath Shinde also sent warm wishes to PM Modi. Sand sculptor Sudarsan Pak dedicated a sand art to the Prime Minister, wishing him a prosperous future. PM Modi will inaugurate 26 lakh PM Awas houses during his visit to Odisha today. He is scheduled to interact with beneficiaries and launch the Subhadra Yojana. Join us for more updates on this special occasion. Mangalore, 17th September. In a major political development, Arun Kumar's self-imposed 48-hour deadline to resign as the Chief Minister of Delhi ends today. After being granted bail by the Supreme Court, Kumar shocked everyone by announcing his resignation to seek justice from the People's Court. The question of who will succeed him remains unanswered, with the AAP set to make an announcement soon. The list of potential candidates includes Atishi, Sora Bardwaj, Raghav Chada, Kailash Gullit, and Sanjay Singh. Despite the turmoil, Kumar has expressed his desire for a November election along with Maharashtra. However, his legal battles may continue even after his resignation. The BJP has taken jibes at Kumar, questioning the timing of his decision. The Delhi Congress has criticized the move as a political stunt. Stay tuned as this story unfolds. We thank you for watching today's news roundup. To dive deeper into our stories, please visit our website at mangalortoday.com. And to never miss an update from us, click that subscribe button. Here's to staying connected. Good evening.